All right, well, welcome back to uh, Exhaust Sports Auto. My name is Kevin and uh, Team ESA. Uh, I would greatly appreciate it if you can, uh, you know, like, maybe subscribe and, uh, you know, comment on these videos, maybe share it if you will, because uh, that definitely helps. The chances of getting more vehicles to review, of course. Today, the vehicle that we are in is the 2019 Acura ILX, which is basically the same car for 2020 as well. Nothing's really changed. And this vehicle is actually a base model Acura ILX. It is not like the Super Sports or the A-Spec or whatever. It's just a regular one. And that's fine because that's what most millennials will be able to afford anyway. So, and yes, that is who is probably going to be buying this vehicle anyways. Uh, they're the only ones. So they can, uh, you know, buy it and flex it on the gram, right? Because a Honda Accord, even though it's pretty much better in every single way to this vehicle, uh, is not good enough for the gram. So um, the, the, the kids, the children, they want this car, right? But no matter, we're going to check it out regardless. So I have been driving this vehicle around for a little bit and I've driven the TLX. I've actually already done a review on that vehicle and I'll definitely leave a link to that somewhere, either on the screen or down in the description box. I really like the TLX. Uh, it was just the four cylinder. I've driven every iteration of the TLX and uh, as well as the TSXs and all that stuff. And that TLX was particularly amazing because it had the rear wheel steering, right? And it felt extremely peppy off the line with just the four cylinder. And this ILX actually uses the exact same power plant, the 201 horsepower, 180 pounds feet of torque, 2.4 liter four cylinder. Oh my gosh, that, that VTEC, oh wow, that is uh, next level for sure. It's, a, it's definitely not the fastest car in the world. In fact, um, despite its 3,100 pound curb weight, I actually don't think that this moves with the same level of enthusiasm as the 3,400 pound TLX does. I don't know what that is because it even uses the same excellent, amazing eight speed uh, dual clutch transmission that was in-house built by Honda that I absolutely love. This is actually, I'll put this thing in sport mode. This is actually the only like automatic like paddle shifter car that I like to drive like with the paddles actually has like really amazing crisp like downshifts because it kind of rev matches so that's really nice the only thing I don't like is I don't know why the sport mode is like integrated with the gear shifter I hate it when car companies do that the TLX wasn't like that TLX had a little button that you can press but no matter since we're at this light, this is a redesigned model for 2019. It kind of replaces that old 2018 with the beak grill that apparently nobody liked. I liked it. It, it auto upshifts for you, so that's that's no fun. But like, it, it is definitely one of the only um, <laughs> paddle shifter like type vehicles I actually like to use. There are some performance cars like BMW that I don't even care for the paddle shifters for but this car i actually find myself using a little bit more same with the tlx because it's the same transmission but yeah anyway like i was saying it was redesigned for 2019 uh i really like the styling of this thing if you know i, I already mentioned that the honda accord is pretty much better in every way but some of you might really like the accurate design language like i do this is a really awesome design especially like this red paint color i don't know how well it's coming through on camera but i absolutely love it it looks phenomenal comes with 17 inch wheels and they look excellent as well wrapped in these uh, michelin 215 wide tires all around so definitely not a bad little setup for sure it's only like a twenty six thousand dollar car so that's pretty awesome uh it's the cheapest like if you're looking at this you're looking at it because you're younger and you're graduated from college or whatever and you're looking for a luxury car right for uh you know to show all your hard work i guess to see that's paying off uh I just had to avoid a car that gets there. But anyway, yeah, it's a $26,000. It's the cheapest entry-level luxury car that you can possibly buy. So for that reason alone, I mean, that that is pretty awesome, right? You can definitely flux on your friends. Um, when I had a TSX, uh, when I bought that thing, people stopped talking to me for a year. So these things, it definitely does work. If you bought a Honda Accord, nobody's going to care. People still continue to be your friend. Uh, so if you want that to end, get yourself this car because there is definitely a level of prestige to it. Granted, yes, this is a very small little car. It's basically a glorified Civic. I would like to say that it's more comfortable than a Civic or just more refined. And in some ways it is. This is um really quiet. Like in terms of just wind noise, it is so damn quiet. It's actually like really good for that. But um like 
higher speeds like it's got excellent levels of stability despite its petite little size it's, it's definitely a well done vehicle for sure there's definitely a, uh, above average tire noise though which is kind of what you would expect out of a compact car not really like a luxury car if you will it's definitely not bad it's not going to like disturb you but it rides reasonably well and it is quiet in terms of weight noise so that's really good i appreciate that and, and you know it does it does ride it actually rides almost like a is 350 lexus that's which is kind of a good thing like if you go over like really harsh stuff you'll hear it but like it won't really translate into the cabin which is good so i appreciate that this is a very kind of like old school kind of new car if you will and that's a good thing i kind of really appreciate that you know, the, the steering, it is an electric steering rack. However, it does feel extremely natural. I do appreciate it. Um, when you put it in the sport mode, nothing really changes other than the uh, the transmission logic. It just kicks you down a gear. That's about it. But there is definitely a sense of nimbleness to this car. It is definitely smaller. So, you know, it definitely feels lighter on its toes than a TLX. And I just really appreciate that. There is no rear wheel steering with this thing. There is no all wheel drive option either. But it is a great feeling car. I do like it a lot. It handles really well. This would have been really nice with the uh, with the manual transmission. They could have made it that you know a little nimble, small sports sedan, but they didn't. There's really not a lot of body roll with this thing, so that's good. Like I mentioned, it's not like that fast, but um, if you keep putting your foot down into it, you know any car will do triple digit speeds. Not saying that I did that there, but um, it was getting up there. That's for sure. That VTEC, you know, that nice little uh, change in tone, that little growl, I do appreciate that. So, I mean, driving-wise, it's a fun little car, actually. I like the chassis. I like the way the steering is set up. Nothing feels stupid or unnatural. It's um, very kind of traditional, kind of old-school Acura, and I like that, and I think a lot of people will appreciate that, especially if you came from, like, a TSX or something. You might like this. And that's kind of a good transition into the interior segment because uh, these seats, actually, it's far more... Like, the new Acura seats even though this is just pleather it's like fake leather it's so damn soft it's far better than what the old Acura seats felt like and because it's kind of like this pleatherish material uh, it's going to hold up really well granted this car only has like 1400 miles but the uh, the 20 30k 40k miles uh TLXs I've tried out with the fake leather interiors they held up perfectly so uh, I feel like this will too and with the added comfort of the seats and just the overall like ride quality this makes it like a very just livable package I guess and like I mentioned at the beginning, you know, this is a base model, so there's really nothing going on here. You have like this little pathetic like calculator size screen, like it's, it's like a little TI-84 screen right there. Um, it doesn't really show you much. It does have Bluetooth. No ELS audio in here. Uh, the audio sounds absolutely pathetic. It's not terrible, but it's just like there's no real punch to it. There's no bass. It's not particularly loud. So I mean, it just gets the point across, really. That, that's all this audio system does. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. It's a bass system. I do like the small little creature comforts you get, like the um, the automatic headlights. That's always great to see in a car, as well as uh, auto, like, one-touch up-and-down windows for the front two sides. It's not, like, double-pane glass, but, like, it's, like I mentioned, it's pretty quiet. Like, it isolates you from the wind, so that's good rear seats you know i definitely fit behind myself again it's a smaller vehicle so like if you're over six feet tall uh yeah that's not going to be so good for you in the uh, in the rear seats i'm five foot eleven and um, i fit behind myself just fine the only thing like the, my biggest complaint actually with this interior space is actually just the adjustability in this driver's seat it does not go down as much as i wanted to like the tlx was amazing like it went up and down as much as you as much as you need it to be but if you're like taller you're probably gonna have a hard time fitting in this car actually like if you were like 6'2 in this car like this seat does not go far down enough to accommodate you actually it always feels like you're sitting on top of this car which sucks because it's such a nice small nimble vehicle i would like to actually feel like you know i'm you know if, if the seat like went down a little bit more it'd feel like you're more connected with the car but you know it's not and you know it's perfectly fine for me but again six foot and over just watch out just try it out for yourself i guess reasonable amounts of uh practicality you got two little cup holders yeah the glove box is actually a great size i appreciate that the center armrest is okay it's adequate i like how all the climate control it is definitely separated from the screen and despite it being a base model vehicle it does still come with heated seats for the front anyway so that's great i always like that and you do actually get some uh, some safety options here, like the lane keep assist. It's got that, and like the forward brake collision warning thing. I don't think it actually like applies the brake for you, but it'll just annoyingly tell you to brake. You know, in case you're you know you're a millennial, you like to text while you drive. Um, it'll kind of warn you. 
to kind of look ahead, stop texting, and to break, right? Really, there's no need for any of this trash. I mean, just, you know, learn to put your phone down and just look ahead. That would solve pretty much everyone's issues, but uh, whatever. Nobody's going to listen to me anyway, right? The trunk space is okay. It's definitely not bad, you know, definitely pretty good for this size of vehicle. And the seats do fold down, so you do get, you know, you can definitely work with this car. You know, you can do a little something with it. Um, it's reasonably practical for what it is. Usually Acura's typically are, so that's good. Yeah, I mean, as a whole, like, it's a nice little car, man. Um, again, I mean, a Honda Accord is definitely better. This isn't a Honda, it's an Acura, so it's better, right? At least in front of your friends it is. So uh, for the price point, I think uh, you're definitely getting a reasonably good car. Uh, this is an enjoyable driver's car anyway, you know, aside from the seat position, uh, which, you know, it is still easy for me to drive. And if you're a chick, this is probably going to be perfect because you're going to be shorter anyway. You're going to have it naturally raised up. I guess for its target demographic, this has done a pretty good job. Easy to drive. It's smooth. Fuel efficient, of course. How is it going to hold up? I think reasonably well, to be honest. Um, it does have direct injection, but that's about it. Uh, almost every car has that now. But this is a rather simplistic you know it's like that luxury car that's like super simplistic and it's going to be easy to maintain in the long run so that's very good it'll probably lease out like dirt cheap i i still prefer a tlx over this to be honest with you i think it's just even more quieter and comfortable and just a nicer driving experience but uh, that's just me if you can work out like a stupid cheap lease deal i guess this is a pretty nice car and uh, you know if you want some more flair you can always get that a spec model you know you can get those uh, nice fancy red seats well the sports seats in general and you will get the 18 inch wheels with that so it's not going to ride as smooth as this and this isn't exactly like you know a rolls royce or anything to begin with so i really like the way that this is set up i would just like to see like a, a nicer audio system maybe and for the tire noise you know i wish it was a little bit more insulated a little bit more uh, as far as like the road noise and all that stuff goes but other otherwise Nice little car. I feel like if you bought this, um, especially if you're a fan of Acura, especially with the old TSXs and stuff, this is about as close as you're going to get in the Acura range. Again, uh, a manual transmission would have been cool. This could have been that one car where they could have done that, but you know, it's, there's no point in talking about things that they're not going to do. So uh, enjoy for what it is. This transmission is amazing. This naturally aspirated uh, motor is always something to be, you know, celebrate. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but I think you're going to, you know, really appreciate the way the power comes on in this thing. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this review. Hope you found value with it. And if you did, you know, if you want to support this channel, you can always become a Patreon member. You know, your uh, support would greatly appreciate the, uh, the production of these videos. Uh, but regardless, if you just subscribe and like and share, you know, I'd greatly appreciate that as well. So with that, have an amazing Christmas, an amazing holidays, and a phenomenal 2020. Because this videos came out like before January 1st of 2020. Anyway, uh, you get the point. Thank you for watching. Bye.